So Keith, when somebody leaves your academy, uh, maybe they've stopped in to train with you, mm -hmm. uh, what is the most common compliment that you hear them say? What did they like about your... Yeah, wow, everybody really treated me great here. That is what people say when you come to my school. You leave and go, wow, everybody was really nice at our school. You know as well as I do, Jake, you go some places, man, they're looking at you like, oh, we're going to kill you. Mm -hmm. We're going to beat the crud out of you. You are fresh meat. And uh, not in my school. And quite frankly, um, if you want to come in and beat up on my guys, great, good luck. I mean, they're tough guys. They're, you know, it's a, uh, we use a lot of technique, but the camaraderie is really great. That's what I foster in my school is I want a school of nice, decent people. They say, uh, <clears throat> they say that your school will attract people just like you. Well, if that's the case, I'm a really cool guy that's really nice, that treats everybody with respect, who has a great time, because that's what I see my guys doing. I mean, everybody, we, we, you're not gonna beat up on people visiting, we're not, you know, we make them feel good, and, they're, and we keep, we keep uh, track of them on Facebook, you know, just you come in, we're, you know, we're your Facebook friend, and we hope that you come back, and, and we just want cool guys at our school, you know, and, uh, and uh, the guys that, you know, aren't really very nice, they don't really come to my school anyway, I mean, you know, the, the thug guys. Right, because sometimes jiu-jitsu attracts people that want to impose their will on somebody or, you know, want to be a bully. How do you handle those kinds of students? Well, I want to say this, that if you're a, if you're, uh, if you're a guy, well, you're not going to last very long at my school because you're going to get beat. I mean, you're going to lose. I mean, that jujitsu rips the ego out of you, Jake. You know that. I mean, you get a, you lose, you tap. I, you know, I say you're going to tap ten thousand times. Jujitsu rips that ego out of you. If you're a guy that can't lose, like losing is the worst thing that ever happened to you, man. You're going to have a tough time surviving in jujitsu because you're going to lose a lot. I've tapped a lot, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, now tapping doesn't mean anything. Even at a black belt, I, if I get tapped, eh, it's no 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 problem because I've tapped so many times. And if you're the guy that oh, I've got to win every single time, well, you're going to be out because you're going to get injured. That's the first thing that's going to get to you. If you can handle the, oh, I, I, you know, I'll just come back harder if I, when I lose, you're going to get injured. And when you get injured, you're going to be gone. I mean, you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I personally believe that if you, if you have an aversion like I cannot lose, like losing, you, you think of it as losing when you get tapped out, that's the worst thing, man, you're, you're not going to be around very long because I see this. Especially, you know, people who tap at the very, very, very last second. Have you met those guys where you put a choke on them or an arm bar and it's on and you're going, holy crap, dude, you should be tapping right now, right? Mm -hmm. Come on, brother. I mean, I don't want to keep on doing this, right? And he goes to the very last second and taps. Do you know what kind of damage that does to your joints over time? You, you know, you're not, you're going to be a little slower sometimes and you're, and you're going to get injured on that arm. And, and uh, you know, tapping at the very last second because you just don't want to lose is uh, not a good thing. I mean, we're not fighting each other, Jake. We're fighting injury. Yeah. I got to just stay safe. Over, I don't know. It took me 13 years to get my black belt. I had to, I had to weather the injury. I had a broken leg. Uh, uh, you know, every part of my body. I, back in the day, we would go for it. I didn't understand. I, I thought it was a death match, and it's not a death match. You want to make sure that you're you know, you're safe for that whole time. And sometimes you get caught in something and you just tap and learn a lesson by it. And people, some people can't do that and they're not gonna be around. But to answer your question, you come in and you're a jerk, I'm gonna tell you. You know, if you're mean or you're hurting people in my school, I'll kick you out. Mm -hmm. Because you're the problem, not the solution. You know, it's, it's win at any cost. I don't need that. And Americans are famous for win at any cost kind of endeavor. I see a lot of wrestlers get into jiu-jitsu because they don't want to do wrestling anymore because it's a very difficult sport yeah. and after about uh, 23, 24 years old it's really difficult so they go hey we'll take up jiu-jitsu and then they have that jiu-jitsu mentality for, from wrestling. You re they have a wrestling mentality in jiu-jitsu of go, 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 go. Trouble is you're going to get older right. and you're going to be out man. Yeah you know you mentioned uh, students uh, hurting people and uh, Yesterday I was at a seminar here on Gracie and we were talking about, somebody brought up uh, not knee on stomach, but knee on sternum, oh, where you yeah. put your knee right in the middle of someone's chest. Yeah. It's very uncomfortable. very uncomfortable. And someone asked here on what he would do in that situation if a student did that to him. And he said, I would just tell him flat out, what are you doing? Take your knee off of my sternum. Because oh. that's a, a jerk move to do. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had to deal with somebody being a, a jerk like that in class? Um, yes. Especially like you put a knee on someone's face. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, come on, that's kind of a jerk move. Yeah. I mean, really. Uh, at the same time, I personally, my, my personal thought 
is that when I'm grappling with somebody, I'll talk to them later. So if we were grappling together, Jake, and all of a sudden you put your knee on my face, mm -hmm. I wouldn't go, hey, man, what are you doing, right? Because I think if we're in a self-defense situation, someone's going to put their knee on my face, right? Mm -hmm. So I just take it. I go, oh, yeah, that's, that's nice. It feels good, right? And you're rubbing your forearm in my face, right? And, and then you put your chin in my back and, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, had a guy one time put his shin across my leg and start to... Uh, uh, going back and forth with it and I just smile and go yeah I like that that's you know and I personally for me personally I take the punishment um, because it makes you a stronger person but later on I go dude I don't want to see you be putting your uh, you know knee in, on someone's face like that that's not cool that's that's not jujitsu, yeah. you know. And you're a big guy. Maybe you yeah, could take man. it, but maybe a smaller right. but student could. A smaller could. dude might not be able to take it. So yeah, I guess uh, Aaron's right. If you, want, you know, if it's hurting you, you need to say something because injury is, again, is your enemy. You don't want to get injured. I mean, you don't. And, and people go, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I won't get hurt. Okay. And then you're out for six weeks, six right. months, forever. Right. And uh, like you say, that's our big enemy. Nobody wants to be taken off the mat. Yeah. Nobody wants to be taken off the mat. I can tap. I would gladly trade never getting injured for tapping. Yeah, for sure. I would. If I go, all you got to do is tap three, 400 times and you'll never get injured. Would you trade that? Yeah, dude, sign me up for that. Mm -hmm. I'll be, I'll never get injured. That way I can put so much more time on the mat, you know? And it, well, I want to say this too. If you're a jerk who's doing all this, people are going to duck you all the time on the mat. You're not going to have quality roles. People are always going to be like staying away from you and invading you. And your jujitsu is never going to get any better because no one likes you and no one wants to be around. And pretty soon you'll get the hint that I don't have any friends here. Yeah, because you're a jerk. You don't know how to do jujitsu. Okay. And shame on your instructor for not saying anything. And some instructors never say anything. They let it, let it go. You know. So. Keith, let me touch on uh, one topic. You're uh, a much larger human being than I am. What kind just of just <laughs> physically, not, uh, not internally? What kind of uh, challenges does that? I'm mean, sure there's some some good aspects to being big in jiu-jitsu, and maybe some things that become more difficult because of your size. Man, you have great questions, Jake. I want to tell you, um, being a big guy is a curse in jiu-jitsu um, because I'm a big guy. I weigh 200 and pounds on a good day, and so I wrestle smaller people all the time. And that's the tough part about it. I need to wrestle big guys. So when I wrestle big guys, that's great, you know. So I try to find the big guys to wrestle with, and that's fine. But most people are smaller dudes than I am. I'm 6'4". Um, but I, I feel like I'm the dude preaching good technique the most. Don't – if you're – the cool thing about this, and I stole this from Eddie Bravo. I, t I took this, this thought process from him. He said that if you're a big guy, congratulations. Now you can be on the top or you can be on the bottom, and it's okay. You get to choose where you want to be. So why not choose be, to be on the bottom? And that's what we big guys need to understand is, yeah, you can dominate on the top because you're a big dude and, and fantastic. And it, what happens when you get a guy your size who's much stronger and he puts you on your back? I tell this story to my students and that's a very, um, I, it's an embarrassing one and I'm gonna tell you for the entire population you're watching this, that when up until about Purple Belt Man, back in the day, I mean, the, you know, it was really kind of go for it. You know, we were, you know, I had to win all the time. I'm gonna say that I had to win. You know, that was my thought process. And all the way up to Purple Belt, I had to win. And when we started, when we like we were gonna start a match right now, right? We would we would slap, right? We would no bump. It was just a slap, right? There we go, right? And I would push you. I would tackle you as much as I as fast as I could because I needed you to be in the guard because I had to be on top when I was a big guy. And so then I would. Pass your guard, because I was good at that, because I'm a big guy, pass your guard. I'd get side control, and I'd finish you with an Americana a lot, you know. Typical big Typical guy Typical big guy stuff, man. I was right there, right? And um, Or I'd put a choke on you or something like that. But I never wanted to do like a, a straight arm bar, right? Because if I lost the position, then you could get up, and well, I'd be on the bottom, and I didn't want to do that. And then in my mind, I was always going, yeah, I'll work on the bottom later, because what I'm doing now is is working and one day I had this epiphany, you know, when is later, Keith? You're a big dude, man. And I'm looking at a professor who's always on the bottom, you know, and he kept telling me, he goes, Keith, you need to be on the bottom all the time. And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. And, that, and so finally I said, hey, I'm gonna be on the bottom. And from that day on, I was on the bottom all the time. So like my side control bottom, um, my guard, my guard's pretty good, my side control bottom, I'm very comfortable there just being on my back all the time. And as a big guy, that's what you need to do. You need to be on your back all the time because it's easy to be on top when you want to. Right. And that's the curse of the big guys. We can control this match. We're smaller dudes, you're gonna be on the bottom. And that's where jujitsu's at is on the bottom. 
And Professor Sauer says that if you will work on your bottom game, that's where your hip movement comes in. So that when you're on the top, your hip movement's just awesome. You're not going to reverse that. You're not going to get any great hip movement being on top. It doesn't transcend to the bottom game. So be on the bottom and work your bottom game and the, your top game will seriously improve with your hips. Mm. But we big guys, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever because I'm too busy winning. Mm -hmm. That I do my same tired old crap that I've always done and I don't change. And man, if you're a big guy, be on the bottom, start on the bottom, get tapped out, but keep going. And pretty soon, man, you will be unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Your technique will be great and they can't get you on top and they're not gonna get you on the bottom. Yep, it's great advice. And that's where, that's where big guys, that's their Achilles heel. You know, you'll be grabbing, oh, I get you a big guy on the bottom, ah, he can never get out. Mm -hmm. And now you've, you've got, man, I know some guys, uh, my friend James Foster, he's called 300, mm -hmm. he's 280, he's a huge guy, but his technique is outstanding and he's on the bottom all the time. And I'm like, oh, man, I can't keep this guy down, dude. He, he's like just, he's really good that way, right? right? And he's a great example of what big guys should be, but most big guys, you sweep them, you're on top. Then they're almost like a turtle. Yeah, you're done, dude. Yeah. And you, you know, they want to turn over. I got to get out of here, mm -hmm. right? So that's the curse of being big. It's, it's not, jujitsu is made for small guys because they're forced to face their demons, mm -hmm. where big guys don't necessarily want to. But you're not going to beat a big guy who's great at jujitsu. Just saying, that's, it's really tough. If he's got the weight and the technique, mm, it's really difficult to do. So. Do you think jiu-jitsu is harder for big guys or for small guys? Uh, I think jiu-jitsu is harder for big guys because they're big and their space is small and it's hard to get into some kinds of spaces. We're little guys, man. Um, like I grappled with uh, Master Hanato Tavares one time and Master Tavares is a very small man. Mm -hmm. just, I mean, his stature is he's a small guy. I mean, you know, and God, he's just worming his way through everything. It's like... I, Jeez, I thought he had a shovel because he was just digging holes everywhere. I couldn't, you know, it was hard for me to keep a hold of this, you know, small dude. And I went, that's what jujitsu is all about. It's for mm -hmm. little small guys to, to I, I want to say weasel their way. That weasel is a harsh word, but they just dig their way mm -hmm. to where they need to be. Big guys are like, ah, I can't get through the holes like that. Right. So then they muscle and it's not good technique. And, you know, they're going to end up getting that shoulder hurt, bust their knee or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I am a proponent of good technique, uh, being good technique meaning start on the bottom, work no muscle, right? If we were grappling, could I be stronger than you? Yes, but I don't want to. I want to use the least amount of force necessary to win because I'm going to be an old man one day. I'm going to be 80 years old, and I am not muscling a 21-year-old. It's not going to happen. I understand that. The only, everybody should have this philosophy that I have. I hate to say that because I don't. I hate to spring this on you, but we're going to get old. Jake, and we're going to be 80 years old, 90 years old. And if we want to still do jujitsu, we have to have the good technique, meaning not making your muscles fire as hard as they can every single time, because that's where the injuries are going to happen. You should be able to find the right angles with the right muscle groups, exploiting his muscle groups to your advantage uh, and doing things with total ease and precision, no matter how much that guy's trying to kick, kick your ass, excuse my language. And, and, and you can you can honestly, I fully believe, do jujitsu for life. Yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Keith, last question I have for you today. Um, sometimes I come across a teacher and he'll say something and it'll just hit me and I'll think, wow, why didn't any of my previous teachers ever tell me that? I can't mm -hmm. believe I didn't know that. And, but maybe you might hear the same thing and you might think like, oh yeah, I, I know that, I've learned that day one, or, and, and vice versa. You know, there's so much information in jiu-jitsu and not everybody has all the answers. Mm, sure. Has there been anything recently that you've heard that you wished you would have learned a long time ago? Well, um, this, is the, this is the interesting thing about being a Pedro Sauer student is because I feel that I know, and it sounds braggy, but we know a lot of things in the Pedro Sauer Association with the details that a lot of schools never ever see. And uh, you know, you did a, a interview with Hickson, mm -hmm. and I watched the Hickson interview, and it's like, I was like, yeah, I've seen that about I don't know, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. you know. But a lot of people in my oh that Hickson interview was so awesome, how he just showed so many. Um, Hickson's been working that for a long, long time, you know. Um, Henry Aikens was saying that as well. It's like, oh, Hickson's been working that as well. So we learn things that are um, about the technique, about using your body. Um, I can't say that I've, I've heard, I don't know, I've learned so many. I want to say this. 
23 years of jujitsu, man, dude, I have learned, I learned things all the freaking time. There is, I, I, I go, really? I didn't know that. You know, I'm, I, I can't believe that I didn't know that already. You know, so I see it from everybody. I, I truly love learning from everybody. I mean, if you were giving a seminar right now, I would sit here and just go, oh, what kind of cool move can I get? So I don't know to answer that question if, I've, if anything um, revolutionary has hit me lately. Um, it's all now just about little details, Jake. And as a black belt, you'll, you'll, you'll see that. It's just, oh, wow, I made my Americana just a little bit better. Oh, that choke came a little bit better. And uh, some of the things that I sit now as a higher black belt of, of, of years is I sit and I, I actually come up with ideas, believe it or not. And you, you, you sit and think about jiu-jitsu and you come up with ways to make things better. And for, is, can I give you an example Absolutely. real quick? Um, I just wrote an article about weightlifting, and I am, I'm no weightlifter, but you know, we, the con conceptually, you know, when we're going to armbar somebody, we armbar them and they go out like that, right? And if you'll notice, if we're going to do flies, if we're in the gym and we're doing flies, you know, we're flying like this, right? We're using those muscles. Well, this is his strong muscle group right here. Mm. And so my concept was, you know, if we could find where everybody weight lifts properly and then take their muscles exactly the opposite way, then they're not going to be as strong. Here's, my, here's what I'm saying. We're doing flies like this, but what happens if we made you do this with those flies? Mm. How's your weightlifting going to be right now, right? Or like we're going to uh, bench press. I don't know. How much can you bench press? I, I'm like 75 pounds. So I'm I'd like the bar. About 75. And you got... You're going to be like bench pressing, right? Right here. But what if I made you go, no, 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 that's not where you're going to bench press. We're going to take it up over your face and mm. bench press it right there. Or we're going to take it down to your stomach and bench press it right there. Well, you're going to lift significantly less, right? And that's the concept of jujitsu. And I was like, that's the concept of jujitsu that you need to have. Why are you arm barring people straight out when you should be taking their arms in circles this way where they're weak here and weak here? but maximally strong here. And you, you know, you've wrestled big, strong guys. You ain't going to get them when they're, mm -hmm. right? And then you throw your back into it and you got to use that technique, but do lots of circling. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you're Americana, somebody, and you're trying to take them here. Well, look, that's strong, right? But then you take it down lower or up higher, or you circle mm -hmm. and you use muscle groups that you're attacking those muscle groups. And I, I think that's one of the concepts that I just was thinking recently that's really helped me to teach the ladies in jiu-jitsu because in ladies in jiu-jitsu they're gonna, they're gonna go muscle for muscle on a guy who try to arm bar a dude like this who's big and strong they're not gonna do it but they can the right. ladies in my class are starting to get this at these angles so you start to really it's i'm in the point now where i'm i'm creating my own ideas now you know and i see how professor sauer does it now i'm finally stepped into his realm of wow i see jiu-jitsu now and how to manipulate the body better to get what you want. Hmm. Very cool stuff. That's what's so fun about jiu-jitsu. You can keep your mentally engaged. You know, mentally there's no, engaged, there's no you end to the learning and the way you can apply the techniques and come up with your own stuff. Yeah. And you can do nogi as well. And, mm -hmm. and there's so many things that you can do as well. I'm a proponent of nogi as well. You want to, you know, we, I forgot to mention that we talk about tournament and we talk about self-defense. Well, the nogi is something that needs to be practiced as well. Yeah, I don't understand guys that don't want to do nogi because it's just so much fun. I can understand if you want to be just an MMA fighter, like like Eddie, you bring up Eddie Bravo, oftentimes he talks about jiu-jitsu for MMA. Okay, fine. If you if you really want to be an MMA fighter, maybe you shouldn't train in the gi. That could be argued. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you want to learn jiu-jitsu as a whole, you got to include nogi as well. Yeah. I this is why I think training in the gi is so important for people. It's because it sucks. Yeah. It's tough. You're grabbing on to me. Excuse me. You're grabbing on. I can't get you away from me, mm -hmm. right? And it, it's very difficult to go through that process, man. You, a wrestler who puts the gi on for the first time, it's great to watch. He's, I can't move. And the, yeah, welcome to the gi. Because yeah. it forces you to think, use your brain. And, mm -hmm. and it, it's much more difficult. It's much more difficult to yeah. gi. And then when you take it off, we, we, we're doing no gi now at my school for uh, a couple months. We try to do that on a continual basis. And oh, no gi is so much fun, so easy, because mm -hmm. I've had to deal with the gi. And then every once in a while, I make everybody put the gi back on. And they're like, oh, man, I can't get away. Welcome to the gi. It's a perfect training tool. Um, and, you know, we'll, we argue about, oh, should you just do straight no gi? I really believe the gi 
is a perfect training tool for everybody. It's so many cool chokes too mm -hmm. that it, there's so much you can learn in jujitsu. That, yeah. but I would also argue that nogi is good for gi. Yeah. You know, it's so much faster. Your mental process has to be very fast. Identify what's going on. You can't just hold as much as you can. In it's the a gi. different hold, right? Mm -hmm. You can't sit here like this and pull now. Mm -hmm. Now you have to hug. And if you, I completely agree. If you aren't hugging, then you're then you're totally. Um, not exploiting a part of your game that that needs to be worked on because yep. the hug is super important especially in self-defense mm -hmm. so again there's the criticism a lot of the self-defense guys stay the gi and they never practice the hug well you know what what if you're not wearing a jacket I mean, we're in southern california you're not wearing a jacket you're going to be yeah, doing a lot of hugging now yep. and so that's uh you know we need to practice uh, i'm agreeing with you we need to practice gi and no gi yep. with gloves yep. with knives with a lot of different uh you know and go to tournaments yep it's the whole complete package, I That's feel. Right. That's right. Well, Keith, keep up the great work. If people want to find you online, where can they find you? Well, uh, I have a new association. Uh, I've been, my association started uh, this year, and I have 20 affiliates already. I can't believe it. Um, it's teamrhinobjj.com. Um, and if you're interested in being an affiliate, uh, look me up. Um, we're doing some amazing things in the association, and I'm very honored and privileged to have so many people want to be one of my affiliates. So mm. it's a cool thing. Team Rhino BJJ and uh, doing a new uh, DVD. Cool. I don't think I've even told you, but I'm doing a new DVD. It's almost done. It's uh, Lights Out Volume 2. Okay. You, I appreciate you selling my videos. Mm -hmm. uh, Lights Out Volume 2. Uh, and I know I'm a self-defense guy, but I started doing lapel chokes using the opponent's lapel. And I kind of think it's revolutionary stuff. I mean, it's exciting material, and I think it's going to be fantastic. It's almost done, so cool. looking forward to that. Sounds like an interesting topic. Yes. yes All right. Is. Well, speaking of mat work, should we get to the mats? Yes. All right. So stay tuned, guys. We'll be back in just a moment with Keith Owen teaching some techniques. Hey guys, welcome back to This Week in BJJ. Today's guest is Keith Owen, all the way from Boise, Idaho. Thanks again for being here, Keith. Thanks, Jake. I appreciate it. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier about lapels, and you know, lapel guard is a big thing these days, and, and, and using the lapel to choke guys, but I feel that sometimes the setups telegraph things a little too much, and I understand you've been focusing on lapel chokes recently. Yep. Uh, you know, and I'm thought of as a self-defense guy, but man, I, I got fascinated with lapel chokes. So I see lapel guard, you know, I'm secretly fascinated by all that, oh, that lapel stuff, and I think it's, it's really kind of cool, because I love jujitsu. In, in total rather than just oh, specifics. So I started thinking about lapel chokes. Well, you know, when you watch YouTube, man, you're seeing a lot of guys know lapel chokes, but the setups completely suck. I mean, any, uh, like I had a, the other day I had a visitor come in and he's like a purple belt and he's side controlled on, I'm, you know, I'm on the bottom, he's side controlled and he's sitting there fishing my lapel out and just like, hey, put a billboard up going, hey, I'm about to try to lapel choke you. And it's like, really dude, like you're not even tricking me. I can see this coming. And, it, and so for most people, they never get lapel chokes using the opponent's lapel because it's so obvious. And what I did was I created a video that's gonna be coming out soon uh, on a system on how to get lapel chokes and how to set it up, most, mostly how to set it up. And then you can put whatever technique that you see on YouTube into that game somewhere in one of those uh, areas. And you know, it, I feel it's revolutionary and I'm, I, I, I sat and thought about it for a long time and now my guys are getting lapel chokes all over the place because it's just the way they're setting it up. It's really the setup, not so much the choke itself, but once you get everything in place, things go a lot quicker. Awesome, let's check it out. All right, so I go through in my video, and I'll just show you a few things. I wanna talk about um, how to get the hand in the collar because a lot of people, when we're grappling, Jake, and I try to put my hand in your collar and you have a good, look, you're never gonna get, look, see what I'm saying? Look, let's say I do get it, I'm way here. There's, uh, uh, now without grabbing, sit up tall. Uh, Look, I can't pull you. I mean, this is a really crudy grab. I need to be way up tall. But the problem is the more I try to reach up here, the more you push, this is no good. So I need to be up behind your neck here. So what, what I teach people is that we're here, we're grappling. I get up on my elbow when I put my hand deep. Now rip that thing out of there. You're way too it's deep. way too deep, right? And that's where we want to be when we collar choke, especially. You get your hand way up here. It is not here. You will get your feet. Now you're going to have to wear a ring like this because you get your fingers ripped off. So you get deep. Another thing is you want to, when you grab, 
you want to put your hand, the, the material in the pad of your hands, not the palm. People grab here and then they grab and palm that thing and they're holding on and rip it out of there. Bam, ah, and it hurts. And you go, ah, I can't, my grip sucks. No, the way you're grabbing sucks. So if you'll put the material in the pad right here and come around, see, so I'll grab it, cruddy. Now rip it off. Way stronger. It's way stronger. Now I, I get in the uh, palm of my hand, rip it off. Ah, and it hurts, you know? So we get up here and we get it in the pad of our hand. Man, he ain't getting that out. It's done. You can't even get a, you see what I'm saying? No, I can't even and, get anywhere near where I want to be. Yeah, he's, he's, it's a great grip. And it's hard to push me back down because I'm up on my elbow too. All right, so we've established that. How to get this, I call this launch pad A. All right, you get right here. Now the first thing we have to do is when we see things, when we see people do lapel ch chokes, they go, look, I'm about to lapel. And you stop that right away. You grab your own lapel, right? So what I want to do is when I pull that out, I pull it out and I let it go. Or I don't let it go, I pull it out and all I do is I'm gonna feed it to my thumb. So check that out. Can you even see that, Jake? No, I forgot it, you It is it. hidden from view, dude. So I feed it right here. So I'll go one pull. If I don't get it, I'll go back and do something else. Boom, and that goes here. Look, look at my feeder. I'm just doing open guard. I'm doing whatever, but that is still here and I can feed that whenever I need to. Now, when the time is right, look, I'm deep. I can go for a regular choke. Oh, look, I didn't even have to do anything. I have that option. Or I move on when the time is right. All I have to do is grab and I'm going around your head. I'm looping this around. So look, I grab, I go off at an angle. This comes around and now I bring this in and I catch you right there. All right, so again, I pull this out and I feed this right there. The nice thing about this is I don't feel like I need to break this grip. I don't feel a threat. Yeah, you're just like, so you're thinking about this hand, right? Well, now I'm doing this, but all I'm going is I'm gonna attack in this. All right, now I, I wanna say this too. I could just go immediately right here, or when we're grappling, say I'm grappling, I can feed this sucker through right here and just let it go. And then when I grab my collar, I can feed it right there around his arm too. This is, a, it's the same choke, okay? So you can't see anything, can you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's hidden from view, right? He catches just a little bit, but now I'm moving somewhere else. I'm going like here and hold on a second. I can just come around, pull you in. Once I have it, I straighten my legs out. So I'm right here, watch, just straighten my legs out. <laughs> now, if you want to add a little extra, you inflate your chest. Just right around the head. I promise you that if you practice it just like this, you will be getting collar chokes on people. They don't even see it coming at all. And you know, people always say, oh, collar chokes are dead. Well, it's the way you set it up. That's because we're here with a crappy grab flat on our back. Yeah, it sucks because you're never going to get that because you're not setting it up right. And the setup is super important. So, if, and you know, my legs could be open. Look, I'm scissor sweeping right here. Push on me if you want to. Look, I just feed, all I gotta do is get that. Mm -hmm. Now I can forget about it for five minutes if I want to. And you don't even see it. And that's how, that's how it's gonna get caught. Boom, right there. You mentioned straightening your legs. What's the point of that? Well, I always, um, <clears throat> we could get in an argument out, do you bring your knees close to you during a choke or away from you during a choke? But if you can make his hips go away while you leave his neck in that place, it really puts him in an awkward position to be able to posture up. So you put me in a choke. So we're right here, hand in the collar, right? All right. So right here, if you bring your knees to you while, you, while you're bringing me to you, that'll work. But now it allows me to start pushing up. But if you'll straighten out your legs and pull your, one more time, let's see if I can get out. Straighten your legs out, super deep, look. Oh. My hips are caught. Mm -hmm. Here when I come forward, Jake, now my hips can come up, mm -hmm. right? But when you sink them into place back here and bring this to me or to you, oh. See, it, it just locks me into place. Right. So that's, that's how would I feel a good choke. If you'll straighten out your legs, people will tap a lot quicker. You, it'll work bringing them to you, but you know, on a bigger guy and a smaller guy, it makes it pretty difficult. So that's why I always say straighten out your legs, 
people will disagree, but I find it uh, to be effective for me, personally. Excellent. Great, great teachings, Keith. And if people want to find that DVD, what's it called? Where can you get it? It's going to be called uh, Fav or, uh, Lights Out Volume 2, Using Your Opponent's Lapel to Choke Them. Volume 3 is going to be using your own lapel to choke a guy. So I'm taking it up another level. But uh, you can get it at Budo Videos. Excellent. There you go. I think. So that's going to be, it's going to be cool, and I think people are going to like it. So it's going to be a great way to set up lapel chokes and get them and you can put anything I got a, a ton of lapel chokes but you can put anything you want in there using the concepts that I'm teaching so it's really cool setups I appreciate that thanks, thanks so buddy. Much for coming I appreciate you. you dude and thank you guys for tuning in to this week in BJJ we'll be back next week with another new episode so I'm sorry I forgot to mention earlier but today I'm wearing a t-shirt from Megaton Megaton gave this to me at the world's this uh this the 20 here that represents 20 world championships that he's competed at. What a guy. He's one of the most interesting guys in the sport. So congratulations on the 20 years, Megaton. Thanks for the shirt. And um, hope you enjoyed the show today. If you did, please click that like button if you're watching it on YouTube. If you have a comment, we'd love to see your comments down below also. And uh, be sure to subscribe so we can keep you up to date on when we have new episodes. Speaking of new episodes, this is This Week in BJJ, so next week we'll be back with another episode. Chelsea Leah will be our guest. She is uh, an instructor at AOJ, uh, the Mendes Brothers Academy, and she's also going to be competing at the Five Grappling Super League on August 2nd, so I look forward to talking to her. So we'll see you guys next time on This Week in BJJ.